let me start by sharing with you something that may seem a little left field, but allow me to explain as we go along why I've decided to open with this, this one piece of important information. And that is that um, on the 26th, so where are we? We're three days away. It's actually going to be the Mayan New Year. And you know my love of ancient cultures and, and traditions. So of course, knowing that that was happening, um, it caught my interest. And in true Pippa style, I had to dive a little deeper. I had to go into, well, what is exactly a Mayan New Year? And um, according to their New Year, um, we are now in what they call, and I quote, the yellow crystal seed year. <laughs> um, and when they begin the new year, they always start it with five days of silence and introspection. So different, of course, to the way we see in any new year. But I was captivated by that. I thought, my goodness, five days. Well, each day represents, I mean, it's very complicated and I won't go into it, but each day represents the, the, the five different cycles that exist. And in this five days of silence and introspection, um, they encourage you to do, and I, I'm going to quote directly, to germinate new convictions, to concentrate on flourishing what we want to see on earth and to mature what was uh, seen and sown in the time before. And that was called the blue spectral storm, oddly enough. We're in a seed now, but the one before was storm. And that time they believed was to loosen um, the control that we have on our world, to allow the much needed change, the space that it needs to come into being. So according to their culture and their calendar, this new year, starting on Wednesday, requires, and again, I'll quote directly, the connection of the self with the heart in order to synchronize with what makes us feel happy, to recognize what keeps us from the truth, as well as teaching us to respect one another. And obviously, the process and the discipline of listening really is, pro is, the, is the, the fountain of the possibility of all these things. To synchronize, to connect with ourself and our heart, and to recognize, most importantly, what keeps us from the truth. I wanted to pick up on that because if any of you have ever studied science of mind, this name will be familiar to you, uh, Ernest Holmes. And Ernest Holm talks about, um, in the same way what in Didiri, that she calls it the spring, he calls it that place within us, that place that knows and knows that it knows. And very often the only way to connect with that is to allow ourselves that time to actually sit and listen to what it's saying. An old... Uh, elder and teacher of mine always used to say, you know the answer. It's just whether you're willing to listen to it or not. I'll pick up on that a little later. But part of, I believe, our reluctance sometimes to be still and our reluctance to really tune in and listen deeply is that we're uncomfortable with welcoming in the things that make us uncomfortable. Um, and so allow me to share this insight 
with someone who grasped it 700 years ago, <laughs> Rumi. And you may be familiar with his guest house um, poem. He said, this being human is a guest house and every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome, he says, welcome and entertain them all. And this, of course, is the key to listening, is whether in that stillness, in that moment, when these joys, these depressions, as he says, even a crowd of sorrows, are we willing to make space for them? He says those sorrows violently sweep our house, empty of it, of its furniture. But, he said, still treat it honorably. It's an honorable guest. And I love what he says. This guest may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. And be grateful for what comes because each one has been sent as a guide from beyond. Listening, as I have come to understand it, is a doorway into presence. Presence within ourselves, a presence to around us, and a presence to all that is. And recently I watched a beautiful teaching by Eckhart Tolle. I think many of you are uh, familiar with him and his teachings and his books. And he says part of the skill of listening is consciously and mindfully doing an everyday action, but stopping to, uh, to, to no longer do it as a means to an end. And what he did is he took a teapot and he made tea. And he said, it's something that we very often do mindlessly, unconsciously, unaware. But if you actually listen, to the moment and to the action, therein lies the ability to do this very connecting that things like Dadiri and Rumi are asking us to do. Um, from the Bhagavad Gita, they call it a consecrated action. Treat everything. He even, the way he held the, the, the cup, was, he said, treat every object with respect, not just a means to an end. And very often our everyday actions, our conversations, some of even the interconnectedness and the relationship that we have with other people sometimes feels like it is uh, transactional. It's a means to an end. And I remember, um, for those of you who are familiar with Manhattan, I, I used to work on Union Square West. And in my coffee times, I'd run downstairs and I'd go to East 13th Street, just around the corner. And some of you may even know this cafe called Joe. Joe's Cafe it was the original one. And I would always look to see who the barista was because there was this one young woman who made coffee and I swear to you, every time I drank that coffee, it tasted better than any other coffee that any other person made in Joe's Cafe. And one day I said to her, I don't know anything about you except that you make my coffee and I love it so much. And I just want to ask you and tell you, first of all, I love your coffee. And I just want to ask you, what is it that you're doing that makes it so good? Is it, in, is it the way that you're pouring the milk in? What is it? And she said to me, every cup that I make, I make it and I think I want the person who's about to drink this 
to feel loved and to enjoy this moment of drinking a simple cup of coffee. And I said, you can taste it. I was very sad when she left. She went to work for a uh, time out. Um, and I'm sure wherever she goes, I, I, I imagine that if you're gonna do that as a barista, imagine how many cups of coffee she makes every day, then that says a lot about who she is as a person. So I am aware that time is slipping away and there's so much that I wanted to share with you, but allow me to share a few pieces of wisdom from others far wiser than me and to break down into a few points where we can apply this skill of listening. I'm, uh, I just want to shout out and say that I'm uh, inspired by um, a woman called Kay Lindell, who has written a new book actually called Listening as a Spiritual Practice. So she has really um, spoken deeply to me about this whole thing. So um, I'm going to draw from some of her things and just use that to, to wrap up our time together now. Um, before I do, though, let me share this lovely quote. To listen to another's soul into a condition of disclosure and discovery may be almost the greatest service that any human being ever performs for another. I also love Mary Oliver's quote. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's very simple. I think if I were to have a tattoo, I don't have one, but I would probably do this because it's short, but it's very powerful. Pay attention. Be astonished. Tell about it. So where can we apply this skill of listening? Well, of course, to listen to our body. If we do stop and listen, it is a very powerful teacher in terms of how we can relate with it and relate to it better and what it might be guiding us into, through or towards. Listen to the earth. I love that someone once told me there's a difference between looking at a window and looking through a window. And very often we can look at nature, but um, to be able to look through it in terms of enjoyment. And as my friend, my Hopi friend told me to shh, to listen. Listen to your soul. Again, to, to quote Ernest Holmes again, it's our soul is the wisdom keeper, the place that knows and knows that it knows. Listen to the silence. Beautiful quote from Leonard Bernstein of all people, because of course he was a musician and musicians aren't known for silence, right? But he said, stillness is our most intense mode of action. It is in our moments of deep quiet that is born every idea, every emotion, and every drive, which we eventually honor with the name action. Listen to your mind. Listen to your emotions. And to conclude, Listen to your life. One of the most recent teachers in my life, her constant refrain was this, life is a conversation. And our job is to listen to what it's telling us. Mm. 
In the words of Bill Gates, our true work is to look after each other, to protect each other, to be of benefit to one another. And I would add to Bill how to do that, to truly listen to one another and to go back to that beautiful song that we started with. Hear my voice. Listen to me, who I am, so that I can listen to you and we can be together on this journey of hearing one another. Thank you. If you like this video, please like us on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click on the bell to be notified whenever we post a new video. Thank you.